I don't know, Paddington. I think you may have overhyped this stuff. Mormite's the same thing, right? Paddington 2, the sequel to the surprise hit of 2014, and also based on the beloved children's book series. Well, it's got a sequel, and I am very happy to report not only is it just as good as the original, I would even go so far as to say it's even better. I missed out on the first Paddington when it first came out, but to bone up for in time for this movie, I watched the original, and if you see my Stardust review, I absolutely loved it. I was absolutely floored. I could not believe how thoroughly sweet-natured, how unashamedly innocent, how, and this is the word that's been thrown around for everyone who's reviewed the original, charming. The charm is abundant in the original movie, and it is all of everything I loved about that first movie is not is here, present, and accounted for in this movie. All the characters that I absolutely adored from the first one, they're all back here, all played by the actors who imbued them with such good life to it, Hugh Bonneville and Sally Hawkins as Henry and Mary Brown. First off, Sally Hawkins, you've already got my love for Shape of Water. You just had to go and make me love you even more for this. Characters in this world, I mean, and not just the, the Brown family either, and not just Paddington, the entire world to which Paddington inhabits, it's, I don't want to say naive, it's just our cynical world mindset that wants us to believe that a world like this couldn't exist. Frankly, I'd like to think of it as a more idealized world, a more idealized perception of what happens when people who are just unashamedly sweet and who just genuinely believe that there is actual good in everybody. I love seeing that here's a character who believes that so wholeheartedly that he creates a positive influence on everyone around him. And the end of the first movie is a testament to that statement. And the thing I loved about the beginning of Paddington 2 is that in the time between the first movie and the second, you actually see not only did it impact the Brown family, but it was actually impacting the neighborhood to which the Browns lived. I was already on board with this movie from the first couple scenes from the first montage of Paddington going through his daily grind. And then going into the A story involving Paddington wanting to get a pop-up book for his Aunt Lucy because he felt that Aunt Lucy may never see London and this pop-up book would have been a perfect representation of it. If the entire movie was just about Paddington going through hell and back to get this for Aunt Lucy, I would have been totally fine with it. But no, this movie goes a step further and adds a new layer of whimsy and even a touch of madness, a, bunch, a delightful madness, which I will say Paul King, the director of this movie, and the, he directed the previous one, the visual aesthetic of this is very similar, I'd say, to actually the works of Wes Anderson. Grand Budapest Hotel definitely comes to mind. It lives in this kind of wonderful, colorful reality that is exclusively its own. I'm not going to get too deep into the story here, even though I will say the trailer does tell you everything you need to know. In this one, Paddington goes on an equally bonkers adventure with another very eclectic array of characters found in normally a very hostile landscape. But the way this movie's written and the way the characters interact with each other, in particular, Brendan Gleeson plays a prison chef I've always loved Brendan Gleeson. I mean, of course, Matt I. Moody pushed it over the cliff, but then to see another brilliant character from him, and I loved his interactions with Paddington. In fact, any anyone Paddington interacts with, for some reason, I, you just see the Paddington just being this positivity virus, which just, when anytime he's around, you just feel so thoroughly endeared. And yeah, warm and fuzzy on the outside and the in, but that's the charm of Paddington. That is what made the first movie work for me. That's what made this movie work even more so. But when Paddington gets thrust into this very, well, a position that normally a sweet-natured bear you'd think would not be able to last very long, just through his natural desire to just say things, just do things, to succumb to his curiosity, but also to just give people the benefit of the doubt and to see how many people actually find themselves, even the most hardened of us, to actually be endeared to this bear. I don't want to think that the world is a horrible place. When you got 
films that are made with such a sincerity to them. Many cynics will say that, yeah, this is faux sentiment. If it were fake, I would have just walked away from this movie and not felt a damn thing. I would have been like, that was entertaining and I'm done. I walked away from this movie and felt an overabundance of joy of this possibility that if even people who are making movies, if they can somehow tap into this goodness in even fictitious characters, but the idea that you, when you watch this film, believe that people are aware that this kind of goodness could exist and the fact that they can make us feel the kind of good we want to be and the good that hopefully we could aspire to be. I, I would say it's a very inspiring movie when it comes to the way people should want to interact with each other. And it's very endearing and it's very sweet. If you have not seen the original Paddington, go see it. I would even say take the time, go read the books, but then you go into Paddington 2 when you're fresh with him, with just the overall sweetness of Paddington, the Browns, and everyone around you. You go see all of that, and I challenge you, I dare you, leave it in the comments, I dare you. If you get to that last scene in the movie and you, I, I happy teared, I happy cried at the on the final scene of this movie, and I'm actually getting kind of choked up thinking about it right now. That's the beauty of this movie. I've heard rumors abound that they've already been cleared for a third movie. I say good, especially if this cast, this director, and everyone involved stick with it. And I, for the life of me, can't really think of anything horrible to say about Paddington because even if I did have something horrible to say, I wouldn't want to because this one is so unabashedly good-natured and has such good intentions all throughout. I can't even begin to hesitate giving Paddington 2 a perfect Narcotic Cast Roll score of <laughs> Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think that Paddington 2 was mediocre compared to the original? Do you think they're not a great representation of the books? Or do you think that no adaptation in the history of adaptations could top what was done here? Time will tell. In the meantime, for more addictive content on Narcotic Cast Roll, simply like, share, subscribe, click, Thou shalt be served, and definitely with a touch of marmalade.